Hi there. Uh, we haven't done this for a while. Uh, glad to have you here. I am in the car, you may have noticed. Uh, there's a reason for that. A lot of the, the people that I follow on YouTube and Facebook and where I get some of my best information from, they seem to be recording things in the car. Um, a lot of them are driving. I'm, uh, I'm not driving. No, I'm not driving. And uh, I just thought this might lend a little extra credibility to what I'm doing. Got a lot to get to, so uh, first of all, just addressing the, the last video I did, I got a lot of criticism. I was talking about the committee of five people that is uh, operating a lot of bluegrass music behind the scenes, uh, meeting at a Cracker Barrel. Uh, the committee was Chris Thiele, Dolly Parton, Hilo Brown, Jeff Bezos, and Prince Charles. Now, a lot of people accuse me of advancing conspiracy theories. I've been to this Cracker Barrel, but I just want to say that if you have credible, unbiased information that refutes any of that, says there is no such committee, I'd love to hear about it. I just want to get to the truth. I think that's what we all want, and uh, I would be happy to be wrong, too. Okay, um, new business. The International Bluegrass Music Association, uh, you may know that Paul Schiminger, longtime executive director, uh, decided to retire from that position. He uh, did a, an admirable job, it's a tough job, and the torch is being passed to Pat Morris, who seems like a, a very uh, capable and, and good guy. So uh, we wish him the best. Here's the problem. And this is something you aren't being told, uh, you need to know about this. Uh, Paul Schiminger, uh, for better or worse, is not actually retiring in any meaningful way. That's a ceremonial thing, but he's gonna to continue to operate things behind the scenes. Now, why would this be? Well, I think it's because he does have an agenda. And that agenda, to be very specific, is the continued advancement of the Paul Schiminger agenda. So uh, something that we just need to be aware of. Um, we talked about adjectives. I wrote a column about the retirement of adjectives in, a, in an annual IBMA ceremony that started a few years ago. So some of the words that we rely on for writing press releases and sometimes our own bios, like words like hard driving and tight, they've been retired and we're not supposed to use these anymore. Uh, some readers wrote in and said, well, why, why do we have word police? Is this what's happening? Well, in a way it is. And I think we need to be a little bit concerned about this. It may not be word police in a, in a uniform knocking on your door, but who's to say it won't come to that? Um, right now, they're just choosing adjectives that they consider to be overused and uh, retiring them. They're even including nouns now. That's fine. Uh, we could probably get by with, some, with fewer adjectives, but think about the future. Let's look down the road. We need to look ahead. You know, if we don't look ahead, we're not gonna see the things that are ahead of us. And uh, I'm looking 20 years down the road and at the pace that these adjectives are being retired, here's what we're gonna be left with in 20 years. Just green, cream-filled, and funky. I don't know about you, but I can't, I can't write a band bio uh, with those words. We can't even use blue, you know? Uh, I think it's something worth bringing up at the town hall meeting at uh, the IBMA. So that's just my opinion. Uh, quick note about bluegrass history, an important note. Uh, students of bluegrass music know that in the early 1950s, Flat and Scruggs seemed to be tuned to half step high. If you were listening to Dim Lights, Thick Smoke, Benny Martin playing the fiddle part out of E, but in actually in actuality, if you were listening to it and trying to play along, it sounds like F. Well, something you need to know is that they weren't tuned high. All the rest of us are tuned low. That's because A440 is a complete hoax. A440 is not what it's supposed to be. It's lower. And this started a long time ago. This is just, we're talking post-World War I. There was an anarchist involved in this. And uh, there was a plot to lower um, standard tuning. And it was successful and we all accept it. So we're actually playing lower than we should. What could be more antithetical to the values of bluegrass music than to be singing something lower than we should be? So.
so uh, I'm concerned about this. Now, flattened scrubs, the reason they stuck with real standard tuning is not that they were rebelling against this, it's just that Benny Sims, the fiddle player at the time, had a tuning fork uh, that was old. He'd had it in his family for a long time. It went all the way back to the 19th century. It was real A440. So uh, the rest of us, though, and including our electronic tuners, these are all tuning us low. So it's something that we need to address. We need to start a movement. That's all for now. Thank you very much.